great sevens. I'm Helen and that means this is Natural Sciences and I'm very excited to be with you today because we're going to be starting a brand new section of work. We're going to be learning about energy. So in the past few lessons we've been looking at matter and now we're going to turn our attention to energy. Now, I'm not going to tell you straight up and give you a definition. Whoa, this is what energy is. No, you are going to do some heavy duty thinking and we're going to brainstorm. We're going to look at some pictures that could suggest to you what energy is. And I'm still not going to tell you whether you're right or wrong. I want you, you to be doing some brain activity and working things out for yourself and then we'll finally move on to establishing a good definition for what energy is. So if you have a look at my pictures here, I want you to know what energy is but before I tell you, I want to know what ideas you have about energy. So when you look at, for example, a light bulb, Inside a lamp, is there energy there or is there no energy there? And which part of this picture has energy? Is it just the light bulb or is it the whole lamp that has energy? And this particular lamp can actually move. I can move it up or I can move it down depending on where I want my light shone. So are there different kinds of energy? associated with the lamp. Right, have a look at these tools that we might use to screw in things around the house or change nuts and bolts. Are they, do they have energy or do we need energy to use them? Right, so that's a, a tricky one. Here's a battery. Right, you are familiar with putting a battery into maybe a remote control for the TV or even a battery into your cell phone. Is that battery energy or does that battery have energy inside it? Okay, are you thinking or are you maybe answering these questions in your mind as we work through this? Here is a picture of a power plant or a power station. We know that it produces a lot of carbon dioxide because it's burning coal. So tell me, where's the energy there? Is what it produces energy or is what it uses, in other words, the coal energy? Do you see that we associate energy with a lot of different things and sometimes we're not 100% sure. We know that we can talk about energy when we talk about power stations, but where is the energy in the power station? What about this? Now remember when we learned about matter, we said that all matter was made up of atoms and molecules when those atoms are put together. Does the atom have any energy in it? And what do we call then nuclear energy? Why do we call it nuclear energy? Where is the energy in nuclear energy? We also know that like the power station, a dam can be used to provide hydro energy or energy from water. But now where's the energy? Is it the water or is it the building of the dam? We all know about solar energy. Some of your houses may have solar geysers. You may have solar panels on the roof of your house. How does energy fit into that? Is the sun the energy? Is the panel the energy? Does the panel produce energy? And what about the socket and the plug? Is that something that has energy in it? If we stick the plug into the wall and switch it on, where does the energy come from? All right, I hope you know, I haven't provided you with any answers, but hopefully I've got your brain doing a little bit of aerobics now, and now you're starting to think about, we use the word energy so easily in our everyday language, but what does it actually mean? So have a look at these pictures. Yeah, we've got coal and um, a hydro scheme again, but I've got some other things. What about a wind farm, windmills, and a car battery? 
what about petrol that we use that comes from oil and gas? Ah, where, where's the energy when we say we go to gym or we take an energy supplement? Or when we have load shedding and we can't use electricity and we use a generator, where, where does the energy come from? And finally, when you're hungry and you say, oh, I need some energy and you eat an apple, where's the energy? Okay, so there are lots of questions about energy. And the important thing about this word energy, that it has many meanings in everyday life. Right? We associate many things with the idea of energy. We may say, if we are feeling tired, I've run out of energy, or I don't feel like I have any energy left in me, and I'm just so tired, I just want to sit on the couch and watch TV. Okay? We, we think of our superheroes that are going to bam, wham, and bring us this energetic thing. They're going to shoot lightning, they're going to bend metal, and all the things that superheroes do. Where do they get the energy from? What is this energy? Because in everyday life, energy has a very broad and very vague meaning. And sometimes our ideas that we have in everyday knowledge, they conflict with the scientific meaning of the word energy and the concept of energy in science. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and take some of these everyday ideas and say, yes, it's all right to talk about things like I've run out of energy. But if you ran out of energy, actually, you would die. So scientifically, you can never run out of energy until you die. We need to explore the scientific meaning of this word and this concept of energy. So, are you ready for this? I haven't answered your questions. We haven't defined things. We haven't gone back to those slides about the pictures with energy. As we move on, we will build up our ideas of energy. So, what is energy? From a scientific point of view, all things need energy to carry out life processes. We talk about all living things. In order to carry out your life processes, and I've given you this diagram to kind of summarize some of those life processes, we need energy. So you need energy to grow and reproduce. You need energy and you're going to do a lot of eating in order to get some of that energy. Energy is associated with growth. Energy is associated with movement. But all of those life processes like nutrition, reproduction, movement, growth, all of those life processes need energy. So we need to understand from that statement that is partially defining what energy is, that energy is something we need, all right? But it's not only living things that need energy to carry out those life processes. Machines and appliances need energy in order to do work. So this crane, if it's going to turn, if it's going to drop its bricks lower or lift them up, if this car or this vehicle is going to move, all of the machines that we have in our house, like your microwave oven, your uh, fridge, your washing machine, they all need energy to do work. And here's the important word that is bringing us closer to what a definition of energy really is. Energy is something that allows an object or a thing, that includes you, to do work, whether that work is growth or movement or reproduction or thinking even, you need energy in order to do that work. Now, I here's the difficult thing about energy. When we were talking about matter, I could hand you a glass and I could say, right, I'm going to pour some juice into this glass. And that juice in the glass 
is matter. You could see it, you could touch it, you could smell it, you could taste it, you could see matter. You could see the glass itself, which was also made out of a different kind of matter. But I can't show you energy. I can't pour you a glass of energy. That is the difficult thing about energy. We can't see it. But what we can see is an energy source. All right, so many substances and organisms store energy and we refer to them as energy sources. So the sun is an energy source. Natural gas is an energy source. Petrol, energy source. All the food that you eat, those are your energy sources. The energy sources provide the energy for us to do the work. So you can't see energy. I can't say to you, here is a basket of energy. But I can say here's a basket of fruit. And fruit is a source of energy. Now, we've got two main sources of energy. And Exploring the idea of energy by using sources of energy is a lot easier than talking about something that we can't see. We can only see the effects of the energy and we can certainly see and recognize the sources of energy. So it helps us to approach this concept of energy by looking at sources of energy. And that is what we're going to do over the next few lessons. We're going to see that energy sources can be divided into two groups, non-renewable energy sources and renewable energy sources. We're going to explore these two concepts in depth. We're going to look at different examples of the sources of energy. And then we're going to look at, let's go back to the slide, how those sources of energy allow us to do work. Not only us as living organisms, but also machines and different appliances around you. So we've got a very difficult concept here. Matter was easy. You could see matter, you could feel matter. Matter had mass, all right? You could measure matter. You could say, well, this matter is so many centimeters long and it weighs so many kilograms. That was easy. Now you're moving into the world of energy, which we can't see. So to make it easy, we teach energy by looking at the sources of energy. So, your juice that you drink, your yummy waffles that you eat, your bacon and eggs, those are all sources of energy. And what happens inside your body is that those sources of energy are converted or transferred into what we call usable energy that allows your muscles to move that allows your cells to divide and for you to grow. So we can see that by studying the sources of energy, we can get a better understanding of what energy is. And there are certain questions. You can measure the mass of matter. Does energy have mass? No, it doesn't. But we need to be able to measure energy. So we need some other unit of measurement for energy and we're going to learn about that as well. So what we'll start off with next time is this difference between something that is a non-renewable energy source, in other words we can't get more of it. Once it runs out it's finished and we're going to look at renewable energy sources that can be renewed or we can get more of that energy source. And that is your lesson on energy today. So how do you feel about energy right now? Are you feeling a little more confident when you say that you're a bit confused? Because that's okay. We're going to make sure that you have a really, really 
good concept of energy by the end of this set of lessons. So I want you to be ready for our next lesson where we'll start looking at different sources of energy. But for today, that's it, grade sevens. Goodbye. Thank you.